Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my name is Alam Muhammad and I'll be uh, talking about a CPW pad, mono antenna for ultra wide band communications with notch band characteristics. Uh, these, are the, these are the authors of this paper uh, and I'll be presenting it. So uh, I have divided this presentation into uh, certain uh, steps, which is the introduction, background, the proposal and itself, the result, and con uh, conclusion and future work. So first of all, introducing the CPW pad MIMO antenna. Uh, what is basically a CPW pad MIMO antenna? Uh, a CPW pad MIMO antenna uh, is, a, is a form of MIMO antenna where ground uh, and the radiator lies on the same plane. Uh, this antenna has the notch band characteristics uh, where we are focusing the WLAN band uh, to notch it. Uh, the basic elements that are uh, making the notch within this, this antenna uh, is caused by the inverted L-shaped notching elements. Uh, the main frequency that we are focusing on uh, to notch is the WLAN frequency band. Uh, and this antenna is basically operating from 3.1 GHz to 10.6 GHz. Now the characteristics of this antenna. Uh, this antenna is quite small size antenna uh, with inverted L-shaped notching elements. Uh, and basically it is very easy to install as well. The notch band frequency operation is uh, happening at every length frequency band from 5 to 6.2 GHz. Uh, very low gain is obtained uh, at the notching frequency and the isolation uh, of this antenna is, very, uh, is much better uh, than its previous version. So the background of this antenna. Why are we are basically making this antenna and what is the purpose of it? Uh, first of all, there are multiple frequency bands uh, within the uh, UWB region which needs to be considered uh, when it comes to designing an antenna. Now these uh, different frequency bands can cause distortions uh, when it comes to designing an antenna. The unnecessary band reception uh, during uh, communication uh, causes interference which in turn can disrupt uh, the communications. So the frequency band notching happens with either dual or a single band. And we are focusing on a single band notching. So the focus on enhancement this project was to make it uh, as small as possible, to have a better isolation, the efficiency should be as better as possible, the gain uh, should be much better than uh, its previous version. We are focused on the radiation pattern as well and the notching capability of this antenna. So the proposed antenna itself now. Uh, we have focused on the CPW, the coplanar wave light configuration of this antenna. Uh, we have already discussed that the ground plane and the radiator lies on the same plane in this configuration and it has basically two monopoles. Uh, we are uh, designing a two monopole CPW pad MIMO antenna. And these uh, monopoles are uh, separated by the inverted Y shaped isolation element. And the inverted L shaped uh, element is for notching. Now, this is basically the configuration of this antenna. As you can see, these two are the radiators. Uh, this is the first radiator, and this is the second one. Now, within these radiators, these inverted L-shaped structures are the actual elements that are causing the notch, the, the notch of the WLAN frequency band. Here, this is the inverted Y-shaped element that is being introduced for uh, maintaining a better isolation. Now, if we focus on this structure, this is uh, basically the inverted L-shaped element at either side of the radiator. And this is actually the dimension, the dimension of that antenna, the height of the substrate as well as the width of that specific substrate. So now we'll discuss the dimension of this antenna. First of all, the thickness is maintained at 8.56 mm. The width is maintained at 51.8 mm. The length of the substrate is 25 mm. The gap between the ground element is at 4 mm. The gap between the monopole and the ground is 1.8 mm. And the uh, gap between the radiator and the ground is 0.4 mm. This is actually the comparison uh, of the antenna with a coin. Now you can see that this antenna is quite small sized. Uh, and the main focus of this project was to uh, make it as small as possible so that we can uh, install it and we can use it in uh, many applications such as the uh, use of portable antennas. Now we'll discuss the results of this very antenna. First of all, these are the S uh, S11 parameter of this antenna. Uh, now you may observe that there is a little shift between the simulated and measured result. 
uh, and that is because the use of material uh, that we have considered for this antenna. Uh, our main focus was also to cut uh, the cost as much as possible so that it can be an affordable antenna. So this caused a little uh, slight, a slight deflection when it comes to the me measured and simulated results. But this was, uh, this was still an acceptable region. Uh, it was uh, basically notching the WDN frequency band. Uh, now here we can see the S2 and parameter of this antenna. Uh, again, there is a little bit uh, the difference between the measured and simulated results and that is because of the material that we have used. This is the gain plot of that antenna. Now as you can see, uh, that the gain is uh, uh, getting on a very low scale at the point of notching. So this is uh, what we basically wanted to prove, uh, that the notching is uh, happening at a very better uh, efficiency rate and also that uh, the gain is very low when it comes to the point of notching. Uh, these are uh, the H10 and E10 simulations on different frequencies. Now the first one uh, right, right here on this thing, this was taken at around uh, 3 gigahertz and this one is at around 5.3 or 5.5 gigahertz. So basically at this region uh, the radiation plan is very small compared to the one on the left. And these are the two radiation patterns that were taken at 6 and 9 gigahertz, which again uh, shows much of the similarity to that one on the left side, which basically proves that this antenna is an omnidirectional one. So now I would like to conclude uh, our presentation. Uh, first of all, this antenna was a CPW fed mama antenna, which, uh, where we were basically focusing on notching a W band frequency band, which was successfully notched. Uh, the second one uh, point is that we have used inverted L-shaped notching elements for this purpose, uh, for the notching uh, application, and inverted Y-shape for uh, isolation. The size is compact and a simple structure of 25 mm across 51.8 mm, uh, and then it is basically a CPW CPWPAC configuration. Now the simulated and measured results are also uh, kind of matching. There is a very little bit of uh, deflection because of the material. Uh, the radiation pattern is omnidirectional, fractional bandwidth of 137% and slight radiation in uh, reserves. So the results are being proven. Uh, in the future, however, that we are uh, focusing this antenna and we are uh, still working on it, uh, we are actually uh, working further to notch as much frequency band as possible using uh, switches, uh, which I am currently pursuing as well. Uh, and we are trying to make it further action. Currently, its efficiency is at, is at around 95%. Uh, when we have uh, fabricated it. So we are actually working to make it as efficient as possible. Uh, these are some of the frequency ranges that we are uh, targeting in the future work uh, that we want to use it. Uh, so that, uh, when, uh, once uh, we are uh, getting this antenna into the field, uh, thank you everyone. Now if you have any questions, you may ask. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the floor is open for questions. Please. Uh, can I ask you a question, please? Uh, you have mentioned that you used uh, a fake substrate of from radiation fields. Is there any specific reason that you have chosen this fake substrate? Uh, so basically, we, are, we used FR4 substrate for this purpose, and it was uh, easily available for us. That's why we used it. FR4 substrate is also available in uh, radiance. Mm -hmm. So normally, the objective of antenna is to integrate it within RF and for RF and you normally prefer a thinner substrates. So, mm, in my opinion, uh, considering you are uh, you, you're going to enhance the work, you may consider a thinner substrate so that it is more, uh, you know, compatible with RF and This is also in our future work included. We are trying to make it as compact as possible to do. Right. Um, uh, which simulator have you used? HFSS. Uh, have you tried calculating the angular correlation coefficient and other uh,
So I have a few questions. Um, can you go to your slide? Uh, Are you sure it's matching as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, when we were trying to uh, make this antenna, we always studied uh, about, about the different antennas that we were considering. Uh, this antenna that we considered was uh, something that we uh, thought of it as it could be efficient, it could be a uh, battery, and it could be easy for us to fabricate as well. So the first antenna, it was basically a monopole uh, that was uh, in the background. Uh, it had the same result as well. So the inverted patches matching area, we were actually trying to make uh, replicate the same result using two monopoles. So that is okay. uh, my second uh, question is to refer to having uh, uh, this again having an efficiency of 95 percent efficiency. Can you please go through the process how you measured its efficiency, or was this, this uh, uh, you can say the simulated efficiency? It was simulated. The simulated was 97 percent. Uh, the measured one was 95 percent. So can you go through uh, the process how you measured its efficiency and it was realized efficiency? Uh, so we didn't uh, actually measure because uh, those times we were uh, So uh, for this application, uh, in terms of uh, sir, sir, uh, in terms of minor diversity, uh, ECM uh, and correlation coefficient is a very important uh, parameter. But what was the uh, minor diversity that uh, advantage you are getting in terms of minor diversity in you uh, ultra-wide antennas that you are focusing on for this? So, so basically what we thought of uh, this antenna is that uh, it will be efficient when it comes to uh, using it uh, in the radar section actually. Because uh, specifically in the maritime navigation uh, radar, so uh, in that case it will be a very efficient one, uh, rather than other antennas with this efficiency. Also. So, sir, so another question: uh, Have you, uh, if you're talking about the uh, maritime navigation, have you uh, done its power response uh, by a simulation as well? Oh, how does it respond to that uh, power, and what are its thermal responses for that? I'm not really focused on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.